below, slippy above. Yeah? So when you're looking at the S&P, this was out at 142 on the S&P, right? So 142 at the S&P, sticky below, slippy above the level. So you can see when the price t trades at 3840s, it sticks, it sticks, it sticks, it's sticky. It sticks here. But obviously it depends upon, depending upon what happens next, depending upon what happens next in this, this, this area, we obviously try and understand what is going to happen. You know, we obviously start watching for buyers starting to apply pressure on this area, just the way we showed you on the stock trade. This will be sticky until somebody starts really putting a lot of effort into this price, in which case it will become very slippy. As soon as we got a bid above the 40s, look at what happened, guys. As soon as we got above above 40, a bid above 40, look at what happens. You see how nice that level was that Mike was talking about right there? You see how nice that was? So what happened, of course, is that the dealers try and defend 40. The dealers were trying to defend 40. The buyers were attacking the dealers. So the dealers stopped a second. They started to defend 40. The buyers came straight back in at 40. And the dealer said, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And the dealer started to buy. The dealers just bought, and that was it. There's no if the dealers buy, guys, who's left to sell? Once the dealers buy, who's left to sell? Nobody. Nobody's left to sell. Make sense? What about the Nasdaq? The key level for the dealers was thirteen and a half thousand. So what happened in the Nasdaq, guys? What happened at thirteen and a half thousand? On the 4th of February, we came up to that key dealer level of 13,500. So what happens at 13,500? The price gets sticky. It's now 1,800 hours. We sent this tweet out at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's now 6 o'clock in the evening. The price gets sticky. It gets sticky. And it gets sticky. The dealers are defending the level. What happens? The buyers started to buy back into this. You see a higher volume down candle right there. The price immediately reversed and the dealers go, oh, bloody hell. What the hell are we doing? And then you see this break above the, the 13,500. The price tests back into the 13,500. The dealers say, what the hell is going on here? And the dealers buy to hedge. And the price on the NASDAQ since then exploded to the upside. It's just exactly the same trade, isn't it? Exactly the same trade. So when you see these levels, these levels are worth millions of dollars in the right hands. They're worth thousands of dollars, possibly tens of thousands of dollars in your hands. You know, but for the banks, they know these prices. They know where these key levels are where the gammas go bullish when the dealers need to deal where the dealers need to defend they know, everybody knows these levels in the marketplace they know these battles take place around these prints you should know where these battles take place as well and we're obviously going to publish these prices and as much as we can in the smart alpha so that you guys can see where these toxic bids are where the key dealers levels are and stuff like that so that you understand exactly what it is you should be trying to think about when it gets to those. You can see them on your charts right now. We know that on the grand scheme of things, this is now the biggest level of them all right there. The final frontier for the sellers to hold on to. Probably a successful hold, one would imagine, after a big strong rally on a Friday. There's nowhere left for the traders to go, right? If you buy an option today, if you buy a call option today, you've got a weekend of volatility decay into the weekend, and you're thinking, what the hell would be the point of these ridiculous prices? So, because of that, there's a reduction in that desire to buy into the top edge, because it's going to be bloody expensive. 
So when we see the price coming up into these key areas, we know it's likely to be shorted in the US session. We know it's likely to find sellers. And if it isn't, well, watch out, guys. But I think it's going to stick around these areas for the time being, at least anyway. It's going to stick around these areas. We're going to be able to watch it coming up and selling into those higher highs. We should be able to make some easy money. We're just going to have to wait and see what it plays. See how it plays out, guys. Sensible. That makes it. That makes sense, Andrew, doesn't it? Yeah, expiry. Well, what happens at expiry, Andrew? What happens to gammas at expiry? Welcome back in, by the way. I haven't seen you for a while. Gammas disappear. The gamma disappears. It drops off, doesn't it? The market maker's taken that $100 million, $200 million, $500 million options through to expiry, and then the options just drop off the chart, guys. They just disappear off the chart. And that's what you're looking at right there, right? Somebody just put a whack, whack load of uh, of uh, trade on Johnson and Johnson, guys. J and J. Somebody's just done a million dollars on J and J. Twenty sixth of March. It's not a it's not a short duration product, but somebody just came straight in there and uh, took a million dollars worth off them. Okay, so this is this is a good example of one of those stocks that we're going to be paying attention to. Why? Why is this a good example of a stock? Well, guess what? We've gapped up on Johnson and Johnson today. Big gap up, 61 up to 64 and a half. Where's the market maker's key level in this? Take a guess, anyway. Just take a guess where the market maker needs to defend. What do you think the market maker needs to defend? It should be dead obvious from this chart right now. 165, right? So the market maker needs to defend 165 right there. So obviously the problem they've got now is they're pretty tight up here. So this is this looks in some ways very similar to what we saw earlier, but it's only one call option. The price at the call option at the time was $164.57. So somebody's came in at $164.57. Now, the one thing you can recognize is, is what's happened to the market makers on that trade. Did they buy against it, guys? Did they buy against that trade? No, they didn't. So, in other words, they hedged, they, they didn't hedge the position. They sold into, the, they took the position on the books, basically. They didn't buy into the stock. So, you can already start to recognize the market makers quite confident about being able to hold this position in place so far. But just watch Johnson & Johnson for maybe spikes today, guys. This could be one that could develop over the course of the morning Szechuan here. So watch Johnson & Johnson for spikes in call option activity. And then watch for the market maker pulling. Watch for the stock volumes building. And then you can take the play. Take the play at that stage. Make sense?